Hey everyone, my name is Lily and I'm the book blogger behind Utopia State of Mind and today I'm going to bring you part one of a huge series I feel like which will be favorite 2021 debuts uh, of 2021. Basically I did this one for 2020 and I had such a fun time doing this video concept and when I was going through all the books I was like I already have enough to film multiple favorite 2021 debuts so I might as well just get started to start bringing you that content earlier rather than later. I, th I think last year I ended up rolling them out like January-ish, but I'm trying to do all that a little bit earlier in December, so fingers crossed. So I only have two of these unfortunately on my shelves, and so it is Counting Down With You and Ace of Spades. Uh, so the rest I will obviously just put a cover up here. The first one I want to talk about and the first one I thought of when I was going through this was Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades is gripping. It is just a thrilling book basically. I could not stop reading it. It is a book about this murder mystery meets like a social media app thing uh, in, in, in an elite private academy. So it definitely serves up the dark academia vibes because it's kind of like murder mystery secret-esque. So you know it's not just a happy academy. And there's way way more at store and at work with the characters and everything like that. All three of these main characters, I really loved watching their secrets and their motivations and desires kind of play out in front of the whole school and this idea of secrets that you keep for yourself and not being able to share them or wanting to be able to share them and you can't. Like this was just gripping on a character level, on a plot level, on a tension level basically. It was just all of it in one was just so thrilling and I loved it so much and I knew when I was doing this contemporary one that Ace of Spades was the first one on my list. The next one is A Fall Love Story. This one is so cute because it was about two warring um, Vietnamese restaurants, uh, like two warring families basically who are in competition uh, and have a rivalry. So it was kind of like a children of rival romance-ish story but what I really loved about it was that it really delves into their community and it really delves into the tension between their families and how their families rivalry slash community is really impacted by the past and by what happened to them by their trauma and how it kind of plays out for the children of this rivalry uh, and in this community and so I really liked the romance I thought it was super cute and precious but this kind of deeper aspect, this deeper looking into that really ended up resonating with me the most uh, of the entire book. The next one is Prepped. This is a survivalist story. I haven't read any survivalist stories before in the past, so this was definitely the first one for me, I think. But, I but what really got me in Prepped was the family. The family dynamics were so complex. It was this, like, conflict between your own personal self and then you as a family unit and wanting to do what's best for the ones you love even though they are making decisions that like you definitely don't agree with and the the family tension and nuance and complex like relationships and resentment and guilt and love and you know all of that stuff just combined with the survivalist atmosphere and the survivalist I guess mentality very much kind of um what the her family's community they're all kind of within this mindset she's going to school and so she like sees other aspects of the world but then she has to figure out basically how much she internalizes of both kind of the outside world and the survivalist mentality that she's growing up with the family aspects just really catapulted uh prepped into one of my top like 2021 debuts because it was just like just so it got to you because it was gripping and heart-wrenching I think in both of those sense of the words. Firekeeper's Daughter is amazing. I love the mystery element so much because it's paired with such a developed and interesting character that we have this idea of kind of change within a community and from outside of a community so basically we may want change to occur but like what approach is better basically is it better to kind of within your community do the really hard work of calling out other members of your community or is it better to have someone to help you from the outside like what is the the best way that you can go about change but it's also combined with this mystery element as well both of those things uh just work really well together but combined with also the main character and also just like the characters in general it became so much more thoughtful and introspective and in a way that didn't have like a clear right and wrong answer. It was very much something that the main character is thinking about as Firekeeper's daughter progresses. 
The next one is Somewhere Between Bitter and Sweet. I ended up listening to this on audiobook and not only did I cry while doing the dishes while listening to this, this one just, uh, it got my heart so much. Basically, it's about the, well, well, actually the main character. So my favorite main character, she works in a restaurant and she really wants to take over the restaurant, but her dad wasn't going to let her really. And so it's just has all these complex family dynamics between her and her dad and also like her love interest. Um, and also the other characters own family dynamics and like own family motivations and dreams and ambitions. Like somewhere between bitter and sweet has this great character dynamic, not only with both of these characters individually, but how they work together, how they banter, how they open up the vulnerabilities of their heart to each other, how they are able to share what's happened to them and their like ambitions for the future. And it also has some really interesting twists that made me kind of gasp aloud when I was listening to it on audiobook. And the family dynamics in the book as well are just fantastic. It just, ugh, it was just heart-wrenching in like the best way possibly, basically. If you really love a contemporary that not only has a lot of food in it, but is also so firmly rooted in your, the, the individual main character's dreams and ambitions versus their family's dreams and ambitions, like both of those things, it is fantastic. I love it so much. And it's kind of like cemented itself in autobi author territory for me, basically. The next one is She's Too Pretty to Burn, which is a queer retelling of The Picture of Dorian Gray. I don't, I've never seen any Picture of Dorian Gray retelling ever. And so this one was really fabulous. Because what has always captivated me about The Picture of Dorian Gray is obsession, the nature of obsession and wanting to kind of have your image, quote unquote, whatever that means for you, live forever. Um, so basically, if you want like your persona, your your reputation to live forever, right? What do you want to live forever and what are you obsessed with and why basically? So the She's Too Pretty to Burn has so much to do with this idea of obsession and this idea of motivation and ambition, but it is also this like thrilling mystery element too that obviously is not necessarily <laughs> So much I feel like in the original but I mean it's been a really long time since I read the picture of Dorian Gray but I don't remember quite as much kind of like action and I mean there's a lot of action because you're unraveling what is the picture of Dorian Gray but anyway it was kind of a different higher paced higher action vibe too she's too pretty to burn also featuring a queer romance so like everything of that was mm -mm -mm, so good and yeah, I just ended up really loving it because it was one of those books where thematically and also plot wise, I was just like drawn through the entire way. I just could not stop reading this one. I think I ended up reading it in maybe two days. Like it, it got me, it got me and I loved it. The next one that I have and the only one also that I have is Counting Down With You. I loved Counting Down With You so much because um, these characters have just made a home in my heart, basically. Counting Down With You has such beautiful, fantastic characters, and having characters really have to think about what drives them, and what motivates them, and who they love, and why they love, like all of those different things. The family also in Counting Down With You is really intriguing, um, both Karina and Ace's family were just fantastic to read. I think that the main strength I think of if we're counting down with you is the character work, the character development, the character growth, the character evolution, basically everything having to do with characters uh, is definitely a win for me. Counting down with you was a something where I loved the characters so much. They immediately made a place in my heart and they only kind of grew and developed and evolved in my heart and also in the book and in my mind as I kept reading. It was something where I thought the strengths of who they are as people and who they are as they're changing their minds and kind of learning about themselves were just, it was so compelling. And yeah, the characters, Karina and Ace, just totally blow me away. And also like the romance storyline also is super cute and swoony. So I don't know, this, this whole thing, I love it. I love it all. And the last one is Fresh. I really loved Fresh. Fresh is certainly the oldest like main character protagonist of all of these ones because it actually takes place in the freshman year of college. I thought this was so unique uh, because I've never really read that many um, books that start with uh, the freshman year of college, even though it's like, why not? It is so hard, it is so new, you have so much changing and transitioning. And so what I loved about Fresh is not only the narrative style, also with footnotes, the narrative style was so unique and fun and 
fresh, uh, but also like witty and snarky. And it was just one of those things where it's like, ah, okay, I see you. The narrative style was just kind of totally my thing. And secondly, what I really love about Fresh is it also talks about making mistakes. Making mistakes, having to own your mistakes, and also forgiveness. I think that's such an important theme in literature as a whole, and I think it's so important for your freshman year of college because you do make a ton of mistakes. You make a ton of mistakes. You learn so much within that year about who you are as a person, what works for you as a person, um, who you are with other people, new people. Like, you just learn so much. You're bound to make mistakes on read mistakes. So, you know, Fresh was just fantastic because it had like a compelling and relatable and empathetic character even though you see the character making mistakes and you're just like ah oh, why are you doing this but then it's like oh it's relatable because like we're all gonna do that basically but the narration voice and then this theme about making mistakes and also um owning them and forgiveness right all all three of them that process just made it so easy to read and there's such a beautiful balance between hilarity and friendship and levity and lightness and also some really really hard topics uh to discuss as well that I think are also really important as you know people are going off to college so I thought that that was fantastic and that brings me to the end of the 2021 debuts in the contemporary genre that I love um maybe if I have other things because you know I'm, I'm filming this when 2021 is not done basically so who knows maybe you'll see another part of this it's going to be a series as I said of other debut categories that I really loved and so this is just the first kind of contemporary ones so hopefully you stay tuned for the rest because I love all of these books so much and I can only highly recommend them for your TBRs and also to keep an eye on these authors as they go forth into the future okay bye